So it's been six months since I had my ICL implants put inside my eyes. Again, we did a whole video on this and shared kind of the whole experience of what it was like to have eye surgery and have them put in. And with that video, we also had tons of questions and comments. So I wanted to do kind of a follow-up video six months later, where's my vision at? What are the positives? What are the negatives? And also share some of the kind of unexpected results from having ICL implants, which I think is all really good information to know about if you are considering getting ICL or any type of eye surgery, I think is just good information. So let's start with the positives, my eyesight. After day one from that surgery in the post-op was 2015, right? Better than 2020, one line below the 2020 line. And still today, my eyesight is fantastic. One thing I like to add here is that it's not that my vision is just good and I'm able to read the small letters on the chart. There is a quality improvement I feel from this. And there's some optical explanations for it. And I kind of went over in the previous video, but I think it has to do with contrast and just that I feel like everything's way crisper or sharper than what it had been previously with glasses or contacts. Now, of course, this is just my experience. Not everybody who's ever had this surgery is going to have as sharp a vision as I have, right? There's no guarantees about that, but my eyesight is really sharp and I continuously still sort of look around every once in a while and be like, wow. So optically as a strong positive, it's been amazing. Kind of the best analogy of how good the eyesight is that I could come up with is like buying new computer screens for a computer, right? Your old screen may do 4K, but the new screen you get is 4K, but it's also specifically engineered or is it designed for like running video games or something like that. And you can just tell that there's an extra depth or crispness, better like dynamic range for colors and things. My vision seems crisper in some way. Hopefully that analogy kind of lands. And then one other quick positive I'll share here is my eye pressure is still very good. The implants that I had put in, these ICLs are kind of the newer design that have a small porthole in the middle, which allows the aqueous humor to still flow through and keeps my eye pressure healthy and stable. Okay, so now let's talk about the negatives from the procedure, because this is usually what people want to know about the most, right? If you're gonna have surgery, what, what are the risks? What are the negatives? Probably the biggest negative is the halos or, or glare after the procedure. Now, we talked about this in the previous video. I even did some animations to kind of simulate what it looks like. So I wouldn't call it glare necessarily. I, I don't think I've really experienced glare. If anything, I see less glare than what I experienced previously with glasses and contacts. But I do see the artifact of halos in my vision or kind of these bright, rings that I see in my eyesight from now and again. So this happens because the type of implant I had again, it has this porthole in the middle. And if there's a light source, usually a bright singular light source that's non-diffuse, if it's in my not direct line of sight, but if it's off 45, 60 degrees somewhere here uh, or above me, then I may see this bright halo uh, appear in, in my vision. And it's sometimes not just one, but I'll see maybe two different halo sources, you know, in just one eye. So if I'm just sitting here and there's this light hanging off over here to the side, I'll see four different rings of lights in my vision. And the brighter, more non-diffuse, singular light source it is, the more obvious these halos kind of appear. And if I'm just sitting here, then they also appear stationary, but if I am moving or the light source is moving, then those halos also appear to move, which if I'm walking down like an apartment hallway, uh, it kind of looks like this. Again, you see a bunch of different moving lights. Or if I am perhaps driving at nighttime and there's a lot of traffic coming toward me, that's probably the time you notice it the most. However, since I had the procedure, when I first had it, it was really obvious. I was constantly kind of analyzing them. Uh, I was hyper aware of them. And since then, I I've honestly adapted to them. I've gotten used to them. And so I don't actively kind of seek them out or uh, pay attention to them. I'm usually so much more in my own head about day-to-day -day things, right? I'm worried about what next YouTube video I'm gonna make. I'm thinking about the next podcast episode that we're releasing or, you know, just the next 
lecture I'm working on, things like that. And this actually is reflected in published literature as well. They report almost up to 60% of people who have ICL procedures do experience some form of glare or halos like this. But then over time, people report having less symptoms of these glare and halos. Usually, again, it's like, again, around 60% or so right after the procedure. But then about six months, only about like 25, 30% of people still notice them. And then one study reported at 12 months, it was only around 15% of people uh, reported still seeing them. And so while the symptoms of these halos do or have improved for me, I still think it's may be considered a negative for a lot of people and something important to be aware of if you're ever considering getting a procedure like this. Because if you're somebody who says, you know what, I can totally adapt to it and ignore those, they don't bother me, I just wanna see really sharp and not have to do with glasses and contacts, then awesome. But if you're somebody who knows you have high anxiety and knows that just even the light flickering off to the side of your vision distracts you, bothers you, annoys you, then perhaps you maybe want to consider that these sort of long-lasting symptoms, you may think it's not worth it now. Again, I think it's important to consider, uh, and that's why I put so much time into making like these animations so that you, you can understand what it's like living with it. Now, one of the common questions we had in the comments of that previous video was, can you have this procedure when you're like over the age of 40 and you need reading glasses? The answer to that is yes. Uh, usually if somebody is getting over the age of 40, technically the, this ICL procedure is approved in the US by the FDA up to age 45, uh, but people can still have the procedure uh, after that if their surgeon thinks it's a good option. But what may be offered for ICL for somebody that's approached an older age, same thing if you're going in for a consultation for LASIK or any other refractive procedure, is a surgeon may offer the option to do what is called monovision. This is where instead of having both eyes corrected like I did to see crispness in the distance, they can choose to have one eye set for far away, so you can see nice and sharp whenever you're driving or looking far away at a friend's face coming down the hallway. But when you look up close, the other eye is made more nearsighted. And so then the eye in your brain sort of switches to prioritize the vision coming out of the eye that's set for up close. That way, someone doesn't have to rely as heavily on things like reading glasses. In fact, we use this a lot of the times with contact lens fittings. Or for cataract surgery, we have that option too. So that can be an option and some people do go with it. Now, of course, at the timing of having that surgery, I was only 36 and still have my full like accommodative ability. Even now, if I try to use my eye muscles, I can see about six, seven inches in front of my face. So thankfully I don't need reading glasses just yet. You know, when that time comes, uh, who knows? Maybe I'll go back to glasses. Maybe I'll try multifocal contacts or perhaps I'll try one of the new prescription medication eye drops that help people see better up close without having to rely on reading glasses. There's a lot of options available and we'll see where that comes in maybe a decade or so. Now, another common question I had in the comments was about the risk of cataracts and if that was something I was concerned about. So a known possible side effect or consequence of the ICL surgery is an increased risk of cataract development. Now, the statistics for this range based on what type of lens has been implanted. Also, the fact that this ICL procedure, even though it's been around for some time, you know, we don't have it studied for 50 plus years, for example. However, some recent studies that have come out did report like a 12 year risk after 12 years of the procedure, around 19% of a Korean population did develop a cataract at some point. However, I will also add a more recent study looking specifically at the newer lens technology that I had put in where it had the small porthole that the risk of developing a, a cataract was much smaller. Uh, they actually reported only a visual significant cataract at five years at being around like 1.2%. Now, for those of you who've never heard of the term cataract before, we've talked about it in previous videos, but a cataract is where the phacic lens, the lens that you're born with inside the eye, starts to become opaque and starts to change color and it becomes difficult to see through. And this is actually a normal part of aging. Most people, as they live long enough, will develop some form of a cataract inside the eye. Whether it becomes visually significant or to the point where surgery is needed is quite variable. 
It just depends on a lot of factors. But I think some important things to note here uh, with the risk of cataracts, especially after ICL, is first understand one, cataracts come with age. And so as the older we get again, it's gonna happen. Like I know I'm eventually gonna get cataracts at some point in my life. Another thing to understand is people who are higher myopic or have higher amounts of nearsightedness, uh, like myself around before my ICL surgery, I was around a negative six or so. That carries an increased risk of developing cataracts anyways. So people who have even greater amounts of nearsightedness, they're perhaps at even higher risks of developing a cataract. And then research publications have also identified that people with a shallower anterior chamber also carry an even greater risk of developing cataracts uh, after ICL surgery. And at least thankfully in my own case, uh, even when I had my initial assessment with Dr. Sharp, he commented how I have very deep anterior chamber angle. So at least for my own eye, I am not overly concerned about cataracts at all. And probably one of the reasons I'm not concerned about cataract surgery is because I have seen it so many times in my career and people usually have such great outcomes. In fact, a lot of the implants that we have available after cataract surgery, there's some crazy cool technology in that that help people, again, not only see really well in the distance, but potentially see better at all distances. There's even now uh, like light adjustable lenses. That means that you can have an implant put in and then they use a special type of UV light to alter and change the prescription after the surgery's been done. In fact, I've done a whole lecture that's available here on YouTube uh, all about these different lens implant technologies. If you haven't seen that and just wanna learn more, uh, I'll put a link in the show notes. So for again, for me personally, not concerned about the cataract development, but it is something to be aware of. And if you, again, need to talk with your doctor about it, uh, ask if they think you're at higher risk. Now, one last question that we had in the comments was my concern of corneal endothelial cell loss. And this is a very specific question. So I'm happy to hear that people are digging into this and want to know more before they consider a surgery. So the endothelium on the cornea of the eye, so the cornea of the front surface of the eye model here is the back surface of that cornea. And those cells are there and help pump fluid out of the cornea, otherwise it becomes opaque. But these cells do naturally degrade and we lose a small percentage of them naturally over our lifetime, even without any eye surgeries. But any surgery that goes inside of the eye, whether it be cataract surgery or something like ICL, there's always a risk of some damage occurring to these endothelial cells. And so that is basically the concern that... Uh, this surgery could cause a faster rate of death of these cells. Thankfully, I was able to look it up and recent reports show that people who've had ICL surgery only have about a 1.5% cell loss afterward, which in fact lines up with basically our natural loss of these endothelial cells. So no, I don't have any concerns about loss of these. And if you wanna read more on that, again, I'll put all of the references in the show notes. Okay, so let's now move on to the unexpected. So when I first had this procedure, one of my motivations was to not only just get out of the glasses and contacts, but was because I experienced so much dryness while wearing contact lenses, right? My eyes would dry out throughout the day, especially at nighttime, sitting in front of the computer all day, and it would cause my vision to fluctuate. And I was also concerned about the kind of the long-term effect of inflammation and dryness on the surface of my eye. You know, right, where am I gonna be at age 60 or 70 with, am I gonna have worse dry eye? Those are kind of the thoughts I had in my head. So I, I kind of figured, you know, my eyes might feel better afterward, but the reality is my eyes feel a whole lot better in terms of, of dry eye since the surgery. I didn't expect it to be this good. Now, I'm not saying that I don't have dry eye ever. I still experience some dryness, especially late nights when, when I've been working a full day and I've been staring at the computer screen. But I will say my symptoms of dryness, the stability of my vision, because as you have dry eye, your, your vision can fluctuate quite a bit as your tear film fluctuates, but things are a lot better for me. Now, of course, I do have to add that I was aggressive about treating my dry eye before I had the ICL surgery and I was aggressive after the surgery about continually uh, treating any dryness and improving the comfort of my eye. In fact, again, I posted whole videos about how aggressive my pre and post-op uh, dry eye management was. 
And the reality is that with any eye surgery, I think the risk of having dry eye or some complication of, of ocular surface disease can definitely go up with all of the preservatives, the medications, and even just the surgeries itself may increase these risks. So I myself uh, am now a stronger like advocate that we need to be doing more aggressive dry eye treatments before having any eye surgery, especially an elective procedure, uh, such as cataracts, LASIK, ICL surgery, these sort of things, as well as being aggressive about dry eye treatment after the fact. Do I still use artificial tears? Yes, whenever my eyes are feeling irritated. Do I still use medications, like prescription medications for my dry eye? Technically, yes, I am testing out new dry eye medications that have come out since then. That's just something I'm, I'm constantly testing new products, not only just to see if they work for me, but so I understand what my patients are gonna be going through when they take them. But I'm personally not experiencing anywhere the same sort of dry eye symptoms chronically like I had experienced before the eye surgery. And I think that is largely just due to me not wearing contact lenses, right? Contact lenses are more well known to be associated with symptoms of dryness, right? The number one reason people drop out of contacts is because of dryness. Now, probably the number one frequently asked question we had in the comments of that last video was cost, right? How much does the ICL eye surgery cost? So the exact price varies a bit based on a couple of factors. One is who's doing the procedure, right? What surgeon is doing it? Uh, somebody who's been doing a lot of them and has a really good track record may ask for a higher, more premium price. Also, where are they having the procedure done? Does that surgeon own the surgical suite versus do they have to rent it from a hospital? And then the type of lens implant that is needed for your eyes, right? For myself, I had astigmatism, so I needed a toric implant. Uh, those ICLs are newer, newer technology. They cost a bit more. Expect in the range of around 7,000 to 10,000 US dollars for having both eyes done. Comparing that to something like LASIK eye surgery, which again has some variables to it, but somewhere around four to five thousand US dollars for having both eyes is pretty typical. And then for a different type of procedure, like having a refractive lens exchange, expect that to be twelve thousand dollars or more for having both eyes. So it kind of falls in the middle. But if cost is a major factor, most places do offer financing or payment plans, things like that. So after six months, I'm blessed. My vision is still fantastic. I'm not really having any bad side effects. I don't need to have them taken out. There, there's nothing going on there. Uh, I am very happy and do not regret anything from the procedure at all. Of course, nobody can guarantee that anybody else gonna have this procedure is gonna have the same fantastic results that I have, uh, right? Everybody's got different health statuses, different eyes, different prescriptions. There's a lot of variables in that. And so no matter what, I do always uh, encourage anybody who's considering it, find a specialist in your area and ask them questions, get an assessment to see how, what, what type of procedure, if ICL is right for you, or if maybe something else may be better. But I will add that through this process, I, I'm really happy that I've not only had this great outcome, but I've actually become a little bit of better friends with Dr. Sharp himself, the surgeon who did my procedure. Uh, him and I chat and text occasionally, and I just keep him updated on where things are at. In fact, we're gonna be asking him to come on as a guest onto the Dr. Eye Health podcast. So if you have questions about ICL, about other forms of refractive surgery, uh, whether it be LASIK or something new like SMILE, uh, let us know in the comments because perhaps one of your questions will be picked and be able to address that and ask Dr. Sharp on that podcast episode. And follow us and subscribe and listen to the Dr. Eye Health podcast on any places that you listen to your podcasts. Otherwise, from here, thank you so much for tuning in. If you found value in today's video, please do us a favor and hit that like button because it does help this video, it helps the whole channel, helps our mission of helping more people learn about the eyes and taking care of their vision. See you in that next one.